and we're live. I believe I actually have the sound on this time. Welcome into the Flippin' Hippos live show YouTube channel. I'm Star the Flippin' Hippo. Um, this is the channel where every week we have some sort of technical difficulty. Uh, it's amateur hour around here, guys. I have no business on YouTube, but here we are. All right, I did pause my movie. I was watching Leprechaun, and um, for those of you that have never seen the original Leprechaun, it's like a cheese ball, corny movie from the 80s, 90s. It was Jennifer Aniston's first movie, and it's just one of those fun, like, we call them popcorn flicks. So if you like cheese ball horror movies and you want to get in the spirit of St. Patrick's Day without going out to the bars and drinking, it is a good movie. Um, and I heard it's on Hulu also. It's also on Amazon Prime. So welcome in everyone. Uh, hi, Red Neckerson's Resales. And Lance is here. Lance, did you bring your popcorn? Your movie theater popcorn? Um, Prophet Bond, but, but, but I was trying to read your comment and your name at the same time. I was going to call you a Prophet Bunch. Prophet Boss is here. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Marla. Hi, Tanya. Uh, Donatella's here. Hi, honey. How are you? Drew Deals is here. So, you guys, tonight, um, happy St. Patrick's Day, first of all, to everyone that celebrates. If you're Irish, if you're not Irish, like they say in one of my favorite movies, Boondock Saints, it's St. Patty's Day. We're all Irish tonight, right? Um, but we're going to talk about doing some spring cleaning, theoretically, rhetorically, and literally, um, probably not even the words I want to use, but we're going to talk about like spring cleaning your eBay store, but also physically cleaning the spaces that you work in. We have 18, 19, 20, yeah, I'm counting on my fingers. We're like six days till spring, just less than a week. Welcome in everyone that just joined us. Hi, Tina, Wendy, and Jen. Thank you for coming. So, um, I have, you know, guys, you know how I am. I cannot ever do a live show. I can't even record a pre-recorded video without my list. So, I have it broken up into, um, like, the spring cleaning that's more your store and your closet and stuff like that, and then your physicality. So I guess we'll start with the, um, why can't I think of the word I want? I should have wrote it down when I thought about it. Um, we'll start with the closet and the stores, uh, or and this can apply to Macari, this can apply to Amazon, maybe not so much Amazon, but it can apply to Etsy, Depop, wherever you list. Um, Probably not so much Facebook Marketplace or Amazon, but anywhere where you list one-offs and they sit there until they sell. And if you have a lot of listings, this part's very important because um, you don't want stale inventory. And my idea of what's stale is probably different than most people's, um, but it, my idea is based on facts. Keith and I did a lot of research when we created our clothing guide and you guys, most clothing takes four plus months to sell. That's just how it is. Even Robert, even Robert Graham falls in the four months plus category. There are very few that on average sell faster. Some stuff does, it always does. I mean, I've sold stuff overnight. I've sold stuff fast. Um, but based on like, you know, straight up math and statistics, things take four months or more to sell. So I don't think things are stale until like six months to a year. Um, and we're looking at more like a year for most things. Like a lot of the plush I have will sit for a year. And that's because plush is its own monster. You know, you're waiting for the one adult in the whole world that is willing to pay $50 for a Disney toy, basically. Um, so those can sit and sit. Welcome in, Holly. Thanks for coming. Um, She's watching Sleepy Hollow, right? So thank you for taking a break from your movie to join me. Um, so when I think of stale, stale things, it's things that have been sitting around for longer than six months, number one. Number two, we still have some of our old inventory that's on the wooden background. To me, that's gross. I don't like the photos anymore. I think they're terrible. I think that 
at that time in my life, I was proud of those photos. <laughs> and I thought, woo, I'm a reseller, look at me. Look at this light glaring off the wood and the bad background and the shadows and how, like, it was across the room in this big. Um, yeah, those gotta go. Those are stale. And, you know, we all still make mistakes sometimes and maybe take a gamble on a, on a brand um, and get it home and it's not good. Um, so those... I want to get rid of two and I don't necessarily want them sitting around forever. I want them gone because they're a mistake and I don't want everyone to see faded glory when they come to my store. No, I'm kidding. So anyway, you want to go through your listings. So when you're spring cleaning, go through your listings and look through the items that are stale. And if it's been there for less than a month, you guys, it's not stale unless it's like a cell phone. Um, if you've got electronics that are taking a while to move, something's wrong. But if you're selling used clothing, plush, ties, any of that long tail stuff, see what is six months or older and decide why it's still there. Is it still there just because it's long tail? Or could you maybe have done photos better? Is your title good? Was your price good? And if it's worth it to fix, fix it and, you know, keep it around maybe it'll sell but if it's not worth it to fix it if it's not a brand that's worth refoto pulling it out of your inventory first of all refotographing it or whatever um then let's start talking about some clearance and some sales that you can run um for the most part if i find items that are stale um unless it's something super super awesome i don't really think it's worth the time to redo anything um and usually if it is worth the time to redo, it's something I did wrong, like a typo in the title maybe, or I didn't use good enough keywords. So like I said, if it's stale, figure out why it's stale. Some things just are, and you need to run a sale and get them out of there. And sometimes you'll catch a mistake that maybe you had made, or you priced it wrong or whatever. Um, the you really can't view how long something's been listed because whether you do good till canceled or um good for 30 days which will be going away soon um they should be switching us all over to good to canceled every 30 days everything rolls over um we put it in our SKU line the sku line at the top so we always put the month the year the starting amount and its location in that line um, yeah, Holly, woo, when we look back at some of our photos, girl, um, do you remember those hot topic pants I had? I, these were like a brand of pants that should have sold. They were cute. They were pink leopard print. I had them up for 60 bucks, which was really good comp. And the photo, it was the photos. I mean, it was, they were bad. Um, yeah, Holly puts the date in her skew field too. So, if it's worth the time to redo it, redo it. Because if you can literally get $50 for something you put $2 into by redoing a couple of photographs, absolutely. But if it's something you paid two fifty dollars and it's up for $20, get rid of it. So um, what we have actually been working on since January, because I don't wait just until spring, we started cleaning the store out in January. Um, I created a category in our store called the clearance hut because we're the hippo hut and I am literally letting stuff go for 99 cents with like $7.58 shipping on it. Um, at the end of the day, if you add the shipping to the 99 cents and take out the 15% give or take for eBay and PayPal fees and the 99 cents we paid for it, we're coming out like a buck ahead, sometimes two bucks ahead. Um, and it's stuff that's just sitting and it's really stale and it's gross and I don't want it. We shouldn't source it. It has bad pictures, whatever the reason. So to me, to get the dollar that was originally invested back plus two extra dollars, it's okay to me to let that stuff go for that cheap because that's something that needs to go. And now I've got three dollars to put back in. So if I can get rid of something and then get three more somethings on 99 cent day that are better, better brands that I can take better photographs of with, and put better titles now that I'm more experienced. To me, that's that's a no, 
a no-brainer. Now, anything that's over a pound, like the jeans and stuff in the padded flats, absolutely not what I let it go for 99 cents, eight shipping. Um, I do have jeans in a separate category just for discounted jeans. And I think the lowest we have any of them is going for is like $9 and then $8 for the padded flat. Um, and then as far as like hard goods and plush and toys and stuff like that, I'm not like clearancing that much because I really feel like plush has to sit for a long time. Some of it goes fast. Um, so I'll knock like a buck or two off every six months or whatever, and then it usually will move. Um, I'm going to take a break and read the chat. Um, Pink Leopard. Yeah, it, but it was like the way, I don't know if you guys, those of you that have been around for a long time, um, remember the way I used to lay pants down? I don't know what I was thinking. I, I thought I was an artist. I don't know. But I used to just do these funky things. Um, and now I'm more straightforward. Just these are the pants. But um, it was bad light. They were just bad. Like my old, the old photographs that I used to take that I used to be so proud of. Like we used to have this black shelf that sat against a wooden wall and I'd put my plush on it. So the bottom half would be black and then you'd have this wooden wall with this glare from the light and then a shadow over here. And I would take these really super close ups of them and I'd be like, and hey, look at my animals, they're so cute. And I'm like, no. Nowadays it's like, nope, not happening. Um, yeah, when you relist an item, um, well, when I relist an item, I should say, um, I haven't dealt with the good till canceled yet because we've always done um, 30 days and then they go to the unsolds and then you can sell similar and it's the, you're just the exact same listing when you sell similar. Everything stays the same. If you want to drop the price or anything, you have to do it yourself. I'm going to assume that good till canceled is not going to be that much, that much different or more difficult. It will probably be us going in and ending manually anything that's going in on its own in 24 hours so that we can put it back in ourselves and do any changes. Um, uh, about to grab lunch. Hey, yo, sell quick, ship quick. Welcome in, you guys. Um, I keep missing your messages on Instagram. Um, I'm a, I'm a bad person. No, I just don't ever check Instagram. I really don't. Um, I'm really bad about that. I'm, I live on Facebook, and I think that's because I'm old, but welcome in, guys. Thanks for coming in and uh, stopping in to have lunch with us. That's awesome. So go through your listings, go through your closets, your stores, wherever you're selling. Find the old stuff, the stale stuff. Find the stuff that you don't want around anymore. And you can either do the severe clearance or run really deep discounted sales to get rid of them, or you can re-donate them. I'm not a fan of that one, just because to me, if you've already done the work to put the listing up, you might as well get your original investment back and a couple of pennies if you can. Even if you only get you know your original investment back, that's your $2 or whatever you spent on the item back in your hand that you can go get better inventory with. Um, if you're donating, you have to wait until next tax time, and all that does is take off the amount that you're being taxed on. So you're not even really getting that money back. Anything you donate just gets subtracted from your profits before the government will tax you, and you have to wait a year for that credit. And if you have a lot of stuff, like I think it's like 300 items that we've, since January, have put in our clearance, um, that would have dropped our listings by 300, and Everyone knows the more you list, the more items you have, the more you sell, right? And I don't know. I just, I, I don't like waiting for a credit for taxes. I want that money now. We want to reinvest it. We want to buy more inventory. But if you don't like running deep discounts or clearances, um, just donate it. Uh, I love the new, I haven't. I have not been forced into it yet. I haven't seen it even as late as this afternoon around 4 o'clock. I had unsolds. So when my good for 30 days in, uh, listings ended, they were sitting in the unsolds. 
Um, from what I understand, when the good till canceled, everybody's forced into it, kicks in. When your listings end on their own, they'll just relist as good till canceled. And ours are still falling into the unsolds. So, you know, now that I've said that out loud on my live show, um, they will probably make sure we're being forced into it. I'm not a fan of it. I feel like it should be a choice. It's not a bad thing. I don't think it's going to do anything bad. I just don't... The The thing about eBay is it's supposed to, to be a like the last remaining platform where you have choices. You can sell used. You can sell anything you want within legal reasons. But they're just like taking your choices away from us. And I don't like that. Um, I don't think it's detrimental. I'm not going to throw a fit. But... Um, I don't like not, I like having choices and I don't like not having choices and I don't like being told this is the way you're going to do something. You know, if I really wanted someone to tell me this is the way you're going to do it, I probably would work out in the corporate world again and I probably wouldn't work from home and tell myself what to do every day. So that's just my take on it real quick. Um, hi, Nikki, Nikia, am I saying that right? Welcome in. Thank you for joining us. I'm glad to hear that um, you're getting good information from our videos and learning. I love to hear that. That's always awesome to hear. Um, so, yeah, d go through your stale stuff. Either, you know, just unlist it and donate it if that's your bag that you like. Or run the sales and the clearance. Um, and stuff that's worth the money. Double check your titles and your prices. Just to kind of make sure that maybe you didn't make a mistake. Because I still catch myself doing that um, typo once in a while or whatever. And you don't have to overwhelm yourself with this. So if you have 1,500 listings, you don't have to go tomorrow and go, Oh my gosh, Star said we should spring clean. And go through all 1,500 listings. Just, um, I would say, hey, as your listings in and they go to the unsolds, before you put them back in, go through them. But that's not going to be a thing anymore. So, you know, just every once in a while, go to your, your listings and see which ones are going to roll over on the good till canceled within like the next day or so. And just do a handful every day. End them, fix them, put them back in, whatever. Or end them and put them on sale or whatever you want to do. But don't like overwhelm yourself and think you have to go through all your whole entire store and your posh closet all at once in one day. Just bite off manageable chunks a little bit at a time. Carve away 15 minutes a day for it or whatever. Uh, yeah, it is the way Amazon does it. Actually, every other platform is pretty much listed and forget it. And, um, but you only pay once. So it's kind of, that's why a lot of people are unhappy. So when you list something on Amazon or Poshmark, you pay the fee when it sells. It's just there forever. eBay wants you to pay the, the listing fee every 30 days or take the credit from your store amount that you get, um, every 30 days. And people don't like that, um. They're trying to be like Amazon. I've been saying that for a year and a half. Um, yeah, Tina, I absolutely 100% agree with you. But I also always like to say it's eBay sandbox. So we have to play by their rules if we want to play in their sandbox. Doesn't mean we have to agree with them. But they are the best platform really for selling as far as used clothing and, and stuff like that. Amazon's better for other items, but um, the eBay store just gives you X amount of listings for your subscription price, depending on which store you got, and it can benefit you monetarily, because if you were paying more per listing every month than you are for your store, you're saving money, you also get a coupon that you can use for... Um, free shipping supplies. By the way, you guys, those expire at the end of March, so don't forget to use the first quarter coupons. You can go to their store and get free tape and free boxes and free tissue paper or whatever you need for your business. Um, I did hear, and I think it was Holly. Holly, if you're still listening, correct me if I'm wrong, if it wasn't you. Um, someone said they're now charging you tax on your eBay 
shipping supplies were as the coupon used to cover all of it, like a gift card at a store. But um, yeah, that's the benefits. You could save money by paying one price and having all your listings, and then you get the coupon code. Um, that's really all I see the benefits of. Okay, so we've talked about spring cleaning your listings in your store and your closets and all that. Your posh closets, not literal physical closets in your home. So let's talk about your death piles. Because <laughs> we've all got them. I got one right there, and I got one behind me, and I got a room. I have a death room downstairs, and I have two death rooms upstairs. Um, the amount of stuff I have is ridiculous. Um, thank you, Wendy. I appreciate it. Um, death piles. Okay, so here's the thing. Death piles can build up for positive reasons. They're not always bad. Like you guys probably have heard me say that in the fall, Keith and I intentionally build up a death pile because we live in an area where it's possible that the roads could get icy or we could get snowed in and we may not be able to source in the winter as much. So we purposely build up a death pile of good items that are there for us to list if we need them. Death piles can build up because you have a sourcing problem. <laughs> You could possibly just source more than your listing, which means you're a hoarder, not a reseller. <laughs> and I'm actually going to be doing a video on that probably next week. Are you a hoarder or are you a reseller? But if you're sourcing more than your listing, you need to be listing um, for a lot of reasons. Um, and I'll get into that in that video. But you're just letting money lay around your house and you're just piling more work on yourself. And you really need to balance your work. You need to be listing and sourcing. Um, they can build up because, well, that was, that's more of an I don't want to. So death piles, they're just there. So what you need to do is tell yourself you're going to go through your death pile. And again, manageable chunks. Don't overwhelm yourself. Don't go through the whole thing in one day. That's just unreasonable and you will exhaust yourself. And you run into the possibility of not finishing and feeling bad or feeling like a failure and that's never good. So set aside 15 minutes a day or I'll go through 10 items a day or whatever, however much you can do a day that's reasonable for you so that you can succeed and not burn out. So when you go through your death pile, is it worth it is the question you need to ask yourself. If the answer is yes, you need to sort these things into piles to get them ready to photograph and list. Make these goals. Make a pile of jeans, make a pile of shirts, make a small pile of coffee mugs, whatever you list, and make these goals as you're sorting that you're gonna do this. Monday I'm gonna do the jeans. Wednesday I'll do the shoes, you know what I mean? Um, if it's bad enough, like if you're going through your death pile and you ask yourself, is this worth it? Do I wanna list it? And the answer is yes to enough stuff. It may be time for you to take a break from sourcing. I know. That's heartbreaking because we all have FOMO, right? And we all like to source. Sourcing and thrifting and yard selling and going to estate sales and even just um, doing retail arbitrage or going online and buying like those thread up boxes. That is probably the funnest part of our job. We shop. And most of us are women and we love it, right? <laughs> you get to pick out things for yourself too. In fact, this came from a thrift store, but um, sourcing is the funnest part of our job. Who doesn't love to go shopping? Who doesn't love the hunt, the thrill of going to a yard sale and finding something, you know? But if you've got too much, it may be time for Star to do an intervention on you and tell you that you need to stop, you need to take a breath, you need to take a break, you need to get your death piles listed. Um, you get shipping discounts uh, as long as you're selling on eBay. Uh, it's just a deal that they've worked out for their sellers with the Postal Service. But the top rated seller plus gets an additional little bit more than everyone else. So that... Um, and I think top rated seller may get more than other people and then top rated seller plus may get more. Um, we've just had top rated and top rated seller for so long. I don't know, but I feel like they get more, um, has kind of like a reward. Um, yeah, Tina, that's a really actually good idea. I'll show you mine real quick. 
Well, every well everybody is digesting this thought that they're going to miss out on sourcing and have to go through their death piles. We'll we'll let everyone um get that in their system. Hey, Noelle's here. Hey, girl, what's up? Um, <laughs> I wish I could come to Oregon and Washington and help you. Sorry, those two states are interchangeable in my mind. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? Um, so this is ours. And if you can see it, I get them on Vistaprint. And if you guys go on Google and look up coupon codes for Vistaprint, you can get half off codes and they let you double them up. I'm not even kidding. So the reason I love Vistaprint is because it's cheap. You design your own and they have that little eBay graphic you can throw on there and you can put your own logo and you can write whatever you want and they allow you to stack codes, but every time you order from them, they send you more codes um, on little cards inside of your box. They'll give you more codes, and you can get codes offline, and they'll email you codes, so you will like never pay full price. And that's the one we use for Posh. And the last time we ordered these, I got 500 for Posh, and a thousand for eBay. And those of you that are in our Facebook group saw the post the day they came in when I was excited. We paid thirty dollars plus shipping, so like thirty-eight ish dollars for fifteen hundred cards. That is ridiculously amazing. And once you take the time the first time, it takes a while to sit down and create them and do your graphics and your text and whatever you're going to do, they save it for you forever. So literally the next time you need more, you can just go in and say reorder. Or you can pull up your old design and do a couple changes if you want. And just stack on the discounts, get as many as you can. And um, these are great to throw in with your orders. People love these. People love to feel appreciated. People love to feel singled out. Like, hey, this store I bought from said thank you to me. People love that. So, um, yeah, I would all, always recommend putting those in, especially on Poshmark, because Poshmark, um, their buyers are different. <laughs> they expect to be treated a little bit poshy. That's a good word for it. Um, they're really super important for Poshmark. Um, these are the eBay ones. If you're in our Facebook group, Justing Jill, they are act actually photographed in there. If you're not, the link to join the Flippin' Hippos reseller pod is in the description box down below. Feel free to join us and um, do a search in the group. If you can't find them, make a new post, tag me, let me know, and I will put a photograph of this. And you may absolutely 100% rip me off and take this word for word and use it for yourself because I got this from Casey the Rockstar Flipper. Um, he showed his thank you cards and said we could use his text and I think he got it from someone else. So yeah, I will put it in the group again if you need it. Um, they do big ones, small ones. Um, they do pens, magnet. I mean, this store has everything. It's called Vistaprint. They have everything in the whole world. You could get lost and spend way too much money. So be careful. Use those coupon codes. And no, they don't pay me for this. They really should because I am constantly constantly promoting them because I've used them I have used them for years I used to own a house cleaning business I used to be a freelance writer and blogger um, I've used them for so many different things for over the years um, I really need a drink of water okay everybody we're all okay now we've all come to terms with the fact that we have to get rid of our death files right so just go through a couple items a day, spend 15 minutes, set your timers. You guys know I'm always talking about your timers. Reasonable goals. Don't, that's cool. Um, I touched it and it was like magic. Um, don't set yourself up to be disappointed with yourself or for failure. If you can do 10 minutes a day, that's what you can do. But if you do 10 minutes every day, the difference will show, it will come through. But ask yourself, is this worth it? If the answer is yes, start making your piles to get them listed. Because I always recommend um, listing the light together. If the answer is no, you can do one of three things. You can lot up the no's and sell lots of clothes on eBay. 
You cannot do mystery boxes on eBay. You have to show everything and have an itinerary. Or you can put them in a box and sell as a mystery box or reseller box on Poshmark. Or you can redonate, but make sure you get your receipt when you donate because that is a write off for your business. Next year. I need to touch my phone more often. Um, okay, so now we're going to talk about the I don't want this. And the I don't want is are much different than the death piles because death piles are typically just big piles of stuff we bought that we like that we want to list that just kind of gets overwhelming and we keep sourcing and it gets bigger, right? The I don't want is are the things that you get home and you realize I don't want to. I have no idea why I sourced this. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to photograph it. I don't want to clean it up. I don't want to test it. Whatever the reason is, it's stuff that you get home and you realize I don't want it and I don't want to deal with it and I don't know why I sourced it in the first place. And those piles are bad piles because those are piles you're not even motivated to look at. At least your death piles are stuff you enjoy, we hope, that you want to list. The I don't want is are the I don't wanna, and those piles are bad. Woo! Because you don't want to, <laughs> and they are a waste of your. They are just sitting there. They are money that you took and threw on the floor. If you have an I don't want a pile in your house or your even room or your storage room or anywhere, and you know you have one, just imagine that you took your money. You took capital from your business that could be, could have been reinvested an inventory that got you a profit or reinvested in a new printer for your labels or a new laptop or something that could have been useful lights a camera you took that money and you threw it on the floor and then you let it sit there and it's just sitting there it's money thrown away just sitting there so um we need to have a, oh, we could call it the hippo hoarders. <laughs> Hip, hoarding hippos, hoarding hippos instead of flipping hippos. That would be great. Oh, well, that's a funny idea. I might have to actually just to make a t-shirt as a joke and bring it to Vegas for you. <laughs> um, okay, so here's what you got to do with your I don't want is. Um, I wouldn't do daily goals with them because... Nobody wants to do their I don't want us. So why would you want to spend 10 minutes a day on it? Pick a day, one one day a week, and tell yourself 10 minutes or five items or whatever you can do that day. Um, and each item that you touch on your I don't want us, ask yourself, am I ever gonna? Is this an I don't want to, am I ever gonna? And if the answer is yes, then do it. <laughs> do it already um you guys i am not not guilty i literally have one of those um the tall brown boxes the padded flats come in from the postal service when you order 90 at a time it's a pretty big box i have one of those full of electronic plushies that i need to test i need to open them up make sure there's no battery cor um battery corrosion i need to make sure they work and I just keep putting more in that box. <laughs> but I do want, and I will gonna. That's not even good English, but um, I do want it. I want to, but I don't, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, I just gotta make myself do it. So pick, your, pick up your I don't wanna's and ask yourself, am I ever gonna? Hey Roger, welcome in, thank you for joining us. Um, and if the answer is yes, then do it. And make a little pile of the I'm gonna's and do a couple a week. If the answer is no, get rid of it. Put it on Facebook Marketplace, redonate it, sell it to a friend, give it to an enemy, whatever you wanna do. Get it out of your house. Try to get your money back, obviously, because that's money that you re that really, really could have reinvested for yourself and your business and you didn't. But, you know, if it's down to the wire and you're never going to get the money for it. You're just going to keep ignoring it. Give it to somebody else. Bless their life. Take it to a shelter. Take it somewhere where it could help people. There's like animal shelters that take old clothing because they use them for for bedding. There's, you know, battered women's shelters that really can use stuff. So just think about that when you're donating too. I did want to bring that up. 
Um, <laughs> I'm losing it tonight. I'm in a goofy mood. Um, now I'm going to get serious for a minute. When we donate, we do not give to Goodwill. We don't give to any place that we think may or may not be for profit. Um, I want to always donate somewhere that's taking care of animals or um, battered women shelters. Because those women that leave the abusive men with their children, they seriously need help. And real quick, let me tell you this, because I learned this from a friend just a couple of months ago. If you're one of the, the ladies that gets the Ipsy makeup subscription every month, I am one of those ladies. We don't keep every makeup. Every month your five items come in a makeup bag, if you don't know. Um, I heard from a friend a couple months ago that there are a lot of women's shelters and homeless shelters. And the churches that have like the soup kitchens where the homeless come in to eat, those places will 100% gladly take those extra Ipsy bags off your hands. And then what they do is they get donations from hotels of sample size soaps and shampoos and toothpaste and stuff like that. And they'll pack little care bags in the Ipsy cosmetic bags and they hand them out to the homeless and to the women and their children that come into the um, shelters. So if you have extra makeup bags laying around, that's a good idea too. Um, just a real quick serious moment there because I really, I when I give to the community, when I give to people, I want to make sure it's going to something that I feel is, is I don't know, I, I feel strongly for that. I support that cause. And um, battered women shelters are definitely something that I 100% can get behind. So I just wanted to put that out there. If you do have extra makeup bags, you can even take them to the homeless shelters too. Um, but they do make like little toiletry bags for these people and give it to them. My whole house is a death pile. Um, I don't live by a I live by a Benz and don't even go to a Benz and my whole house is a death pile. Um, it just happens. Uh, hoarding hippos. Um... We, well, we, you, most of you know, we inherited my friend's inventory. So I had a friend who retired. Um, she came into an inheritance, and so she retired from selling because she doesn't need to work now. And she gave us all of her inventory. And we're talking like a whole other eBay store dropped in my house. So that didn't help. We wanna and gonna. <laughs> you guys are so funny. I am totally going to design t-shirts and drop some merch. I really am. You see the little hippo here above me? Where is he? Right there? Over there? I have no depth of perception. I have that graphic. I have the back of his butt and this is his little tail. So <laughs> I may design some shirts. That is so funny. I'll give a couple away. Um, yeah, you can auction it at a cost. And by the way, welcome in, Bill and David, two of my favorite people in the whole world. I was thinking of you guys today. We went to the um, thrift store, the real far one. Um, when you guys were visiting, the one we took you to. Took you, to. Um, you remember where we went to eat at the mall? That one. And I was thinking about you guys. Anyway, I really got to make some t-shirts. The uh, Hoarding Hippos... We don't want to, and we're gonna. <laughs> um, yeah, Thrifty Christie, that's a really good idea, too, to donate locally. Um, Dress for Success is a great organization. Yeah, I've heard of them. Don't they give people um, one free outfit for job interviews and stuff? Bill wants a shirt. Um, you guys are going to make me make these shirts because I'm going to want to give out a few for free, like in a giveaway, and then take a couple to Vegas for like Bill and David and stuff and Noelle. See, Noelle already knew. She already knew. She already commented. I get one for free. Hey, Colleen's here. Welcome in. That's another person that'll get one for free. Colleen is most likely 98% sure going to be my roommate in Vegas. We're working on something, working it out. Um, when you drop prices and make sales, it increases your conversion rate. Yes. So anytime you touch your listing, it um, increases its ability to sell by pushing it up in the searches. Um, 
It's kind of like you can visually see that on Poshmark. You know, every time I'm on Poshmark, if you touch something in your closet in the back end, it pushes up to the top. That's that kind of thing at work. You just don't see it on eBay. Colleen wants a shirt, too. Jeez, by the way, I by the time I give all the VIP shirts, I'll be broke. I'll have to go attack my I don't want us to pay for him. All right, so we got through our closets and our stores. We got through our death piles. We got through the I don't want us. I need a drink. I'm sorry, guys. I'm still fighting off, like, the last remnants of that head cold. So now we need to organize our inventory, our storage spaces, the place where we keep all of our shipping supplies, and our eBay rooms. Um, so that sounds like a lot, right? Okay, so it is. It's a lot, but you're not going to do it all in one day. Here's the thing. If you have a cluttered eBay room or your shipping area looks like it was trashed by a bunch of monkeys that you hired to do the shipping and they chose to throw poop around and break up boxes. It didn't get that way in one day. If you have a huge cluttered mess somewhere in your home or your eBay space or your workspace or you have more than one, guess what, guys? It didn't get that way in one day and it's not going to get fixed in one day either. So don't even stress about that. Um... Hey, smart and staff gotta walk them in. Um, <laughs> now they're gonna fight over me. Um, I'm coming with Keith, so whoever rooms with me is going to be rooming with Keith and I. I'm peeking in there to see if he's listening. He snores, so now Colleen's gonna say, nope, nope, no go. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. Um, Colleen, we have a sh plastic shelf. Um, I don't know if you watched my videos I've been putting up over the weekend about your inventory and stuff. Um, we have these pop together plastic shelves and the link to those are in the description box of the video. Um, I forget even what I called my video, but it's about your inventory and getting organized and they're really sturdy. But what we did was take pieces of cardboard and make one, you know what I mean? longer 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 and label them and then put them in there um <laughs> yes he does colleen he sure does and you him it's mutual colleen and keith are just like it's like they were like separated at birth they just love each other to death um and then you got Casey and I always fighting like we're brother and sister. <laughs> um, for those of you that haven't seen me and Casey together in person and you're going to Vegas, you are in for a treat because we literally fight like we are brother and sister. Um, it's pretty hilarious because Caitlin, his fiance, and Keith and Colleen and Sydney, they all instigate it and they laugh and they love it. <laughs> um, you guys are getting me way off track because the minute I start thinking about eBay Open in Vegas, I get excited and I think about all my friends and everybody I want to see and everybody I miss and everybody I haven't seen in forever. Um, I'm so excited to go. Um, I'm too loud and noisy for Keith. I think maybe the combination of the two of us would be because this is what he lives with, y'all. And he's really quiet. Um, those of you that have met Keith, he's like super quiet. Um, so I have to be loud enough for two people. <laughs> Hey, it's Zombie Bargain Hunter. The other plush royalty is in the house, guys. Say hello, hello. Okay, you guys are getting me way off track tonight, and that's okay. That's what happens in a live show, right? Okay, so back to your, your clutter and your mess and your storage and whatever you have going on. Just take a deep breath and tell yourself, like I said, it didn't get that way in one day, and you're not going to fix it in one day. And I do also, a lot of times, I recommend to folks to follow Fly Lady, if you've ever heard of her. She, um, oh gosh, Fly Lady saved my life, like, 13, 14 years ago, and I've been following her system since. The only thing I've done is she does control journals, and I've taken her idea of a control journal and what my idea of a bullet journal is and combined the two into a whatever I do. But she is all about creating good habits and um, 
breaking things up into understandable chunks and like 15 minutes a day on something instead of trying to do it all in one day. She's a really, really good system for organizing and cleaning and just um, taking the time to love yourself and um, do self pampering every week and create good habits. So if you don't follow the fly lady, she doesn't pay me for this either, but whatever. I'm just going to start call or emailing people. I am talking about you on my YouTube. You should pay me. Just kidding. You are not old, Noelle. You are not old. But, um, see, you guys, I just want to go to Vegas right now. Let's just all go now and then again for open. Um, so make a list. And break it down real small. So if you have an eBay room that has like a desk you know you need to clean out. And then it has like a shipping area where all your boxes and your supplies are mixed up and those need organ. Break it up. Don't just write on your list, I need to declutter my eBay room. Write, clean out desk drawers. Clean off the shelves. Break it down into really tiny small tasks and any cleaning you want to do too. So break all of the decluttering first. You will always want to get rid of clutter before you clean, obviously. So break that down into really tiny tasks and then break down the cleaning into tiny tasks like move the furniture and sweep them up or um, dust everything or wipe all my tables down with awesome and a paper towel, whatever. But break it down into tiny things. Um, and this is why I love bullet journaling, which mine's across the room. But you can make the little boxes and check it off as you go and spend 10 minutes a day and do as many as you can in that 10 minutes or just do one or half of one, whatever you can do in the 10 minutes. Use a timer, do 15 minutes if you want, um, but it will get done. You would be amazed because think if you spent 15 minutes decluttering a room every day for a week, that is... An hour and 45 minutes, I think. I'm bad at math, but I'm pretty sure it's an hour and 45 minutes uh, overall. So you will really see a difference. And you don't feel overwhelmed, especially when you break it down small. Because if you look at the whole room as a whole and you're like, I'm going to tackle this room or I'm going to tackle this garage, it's like, oh my God. But if you're like, well, I'm just going to start on this desk and this drawer on this desk and then the shelf, you know, it, it makes it more easily tackled and you feel like you're accomplishing something and you feel like you're getting somewhere um but do yourself a favor really and start decluttering um you will feel better when you get the clutter out of your life you feel better uh you feel less heavy you feel like when i get rid of the clutter in the ebay room the next morning when i come into the ebay room i feel like <gasps> excited it's clean it's open I want to work I have all this room and I want to get in here and do stuff and make money but when you walk into a room that's really cluttered and there's stuff everywhere and piles and nothing's organized you kind of feel discouraged right you come in and you're like oh I don't have any room in here I can't move and then you go to do shipping and you can't find anything that you need and it becomes this whole stressful situation. Whereas if it were organized, shipping would be a breeze and you wouldn't, you wouldn't get stressed or PO'd that you can't find anything. You know what I mean? So do yourself a favor, even if you have to work on it for the next six months at 10 minutes a day. And not just your eBay, not just your business. Look around your house. Just, you know, go follow Fly Lady. It will be a life changer for you guys. I'm telling you, when the clutter is out of your house, the clutter is out of your mind, the clutter is out of your soul. And you feel so good every morning to wake up to a nice, clean, decluttered home. And even before it's done, like just that 10 minutes you take every day, you can see the difference and feel the difference. Um, but... Just keep in mind, you don't want to overwhelm yourself, so don't try to do too much at once. Make those small goals. And, um, Tiny Tasty, 50 new Disney Plus. Yay! I'm jealous. You're not old, Noel. Sorry, but you're not. The only good habit... 
I have is not having any good habits. Um, this is mine. And this took me a long time to get into the habit of the water. Um, I had to find out that I have to have a lemon in it. I don't like plain water and it has to be filtered. Um, and I use a straw because I like a straw. If they ever outlaw straws in PA, I'm going to be a mess. Um, but yeah, that's it took me a long time. But now I know that I will drink it. And I have four check, this is 16 ounces, so I have four check boxes every day in my bullet journal for my water, and I do it, but it took me a long time, um, because I would get real good about it for a while, and then I'd be like, well, there's Diet Mountain Dew and Coke in the fridge, and I like that better, <laughs> you know, so, um, what I want you guys to do going forward is to think about everything I've said, and just, um, Get through those death piles. Get rid of your I don't want us. Get the stuff in your store that is stale and not moving. Get it out. Get everything in your life that doesn't need to be there out. And reinvest that money into stuff that's better, makes more profit, will be better for your business. Get rid of your clutter. But what I really want everyone to do, I want you guys to pick one thing. This is a challenge. I'm challenging you. I want you to pick... One thing that you always say you're going to do, but you never do. Whether that's, I'm going to drink four glasses of water a day. I'm going to cut back on junk food. I'm going to drink less beer. I'm going to walk every evening. I'm going to get in the habit of making my bed in the morning. Um, what else do people constantly quit smoking? Whatever. Whatever you've been telling yourself that you were going to do, but you never do, I challenge you to do it. It takes about 30 days to create a habit. So at first, it has to be a job. It has to be a chore. You have to force yourself to do it. Get those bullet journals out. Get those to-do lists out, you guys. And put that one thing every day at the very top of your list. And check it. I'm <coughs> sorry, my throat got really dry. I'm getting all serious business. Hi, Rusty Raccoon. Welcome in. Thank you for coming. Sorry about that. Um, I just got really <sighs> the clumps. No, I'm kidding. So put this in your to-do list. Put it at the top. Do it every single day if you have to force yourself and it feels like a chore. That is okay. Because it will at first. But after 30 days, it's going to be a habit. And you're just going to realize and you're going to notice that you're going to start doing this thing without even thinking about it. It's going to be part of your routine. It's going to be on autopilot. And then you could pick something else. And that's part of the fly lady system. But um, no, you have to choose something that you say you're going to do, but you never do. No cheating. Hey, Trina, welcome in. Thanks for joining us. Um, we're getting wrapped up. I just issued a challenge to everyone. Um, to find something you always say you're going to do and start doing it. Um, 30 days, it will take you to create the habit. Um, and if you don't do it every day at first and you have to force yourself, that's fine. Don't beat yourself up. Just do it the next day. It's not about making yourself feel bad or like a failure. I want to pick walking, but it's still like there's still days where it's really cold here. Um... Like, we had a couple days last week where it was 60 and 70. It was gorgeous. So we would walk our packages up to the postal, the post office every day and then go for a walk. But then this weekend it was down in the 20s again. So who knows? PA is crazy. Um, I like Hello Kitty Plush. I don't, I don't like Hello Kitty Plush, but I like how fast and how much they sell for. Yes, yeah, kind of like Lent, but we're in reverse. Instead of us all giving something up for the spring, we're all going to um, do something new. Create one new habit or one new whatever. Um, but it could be giving something up if you want to. Or it could be adding something to your life, like water or exercise. Um, I think I'm just going to pick exercise. And then let that be generic like whether I do yoga because I have like some yoga my physical therapist showed me that's really good for my back um whether it's that or going for a walk I also have like the body groove videos you know so I think mine's just gonna be like just to exercise and move around because 
I really can't do a lot with my back, so I shouldn't allow myself to be as sedentary as I am. But it happens when you work from home, so. Yeah, the Fitbit challenges are so cool. But I will not walk if it's cold. I refuse to. If I have to put a hoodie on or a jacket, out of the question. Out of the question. Now, we do walk to the post office every day because, except for Monday, because it's just a couple of blocks up. It's not that far. Keith can carry all of our packages for us down there. Um, but on Monday after weekend sales, we have to take the car because we usually have 20, 30, 40 sales. Um, but if I'm going out for a walk, I actually enjoy walking. Believe it or not, I really enjoy walking. But I want to enjoy myself. I want to have a t-shirt on and that's it or a tank top and I don't want to be freezing my butt off and, and layers of clothing it's just not enjoyable to me um <laughs> you're gonna pluck your eyebrows <laughs> that's fine. Noelle you are such a mess I love her she's so funny um throw a keyboard of kawaii in there reverse lint uh walk the length of your house I usually do, um, when the weather's all winter, I do like the, I do this dance thing. It's called Body Groove. Here I go promoting and plugging something else that doesn't pay me for it, but it's a pretty cool, I'm sure you guys have seen the ads on Facebook. It's a pretty cool, uh, like dance free form. She like kind of lays out what you're supposed to be doing and then you can kind of make up your own moves and you can do it sitting down and you can do it at your own pace. And so... It's good for people with back issues like me or people that are really out of shape and need to get back in shape and it's fun. Um, but my, my, if I had my druthers, as they say in the South, I would actually just go for walks because Keith likes walking too. He's not gonna do the body groove with me and he's not gonna go on the floor and do the yoga with me, but he will we'll walk for hours, you know, we'll go out for walks. And um, a lot of times in the spring and the summer when him and I go for walks in the evening, we'll walk for like, as far as I could tolerate with my back, it used to be a lot more before my injury, but we'll walk for hours. And um, since, you know, I joined him in his eBay business, helping him out, um, that's when we like brainstorm. We'll go for these long walks and we'll talk about, well, what other stream of income do you think we could add or what kind of videos should I be making? But it's like a really good time to think and talk, but... Uh, I guess I don't have to live where it's cold forever, right? Oh, that's a really good idea. Walking in place but watching TV. And you don't even need to pay for the treadmill. I can't even remember what it's called. The treadmill. You don't need to pay for the treadmill. Just walk in place. Um, that's a good idea. I like dancing, though. I think dancing is really fun, and that's why I like the body groove stuff. Um... But yeah, that's important too, you guys, as we're going into spring and we're all thinking about the warmer weather. It's important to move. Those of us that are full-time resellers, think about, other than shopping, how much of your job is sitting on your butt. We're sedentary. And we work at home, so how easy is it for us to get really bad eating habits? Not just, just like, you know, of course we're probably all grazing more and eating more junk food. But it's so easy to get into bad eating habits like not eating the three regular meals on a schedule. Like when you worked outside of the home and you had a lunch break every day, you ate lunch. I have days where I forget to eat until dinner. And then I have days where I don't stop eating. It's very easy in this job to be way too sedentary and just get into really bad habits. Um, so we should all just think about being more healthy, I guess. We've got to spring clean ourselves as well as our stores and our homes. You've got to um, clean all the gunk out of you. Drink a bunch of water and exercise, right? So, you guys, we are closing in on the hour. If you have any last-minute questions you want to ask me about anything at all, throw them in the chat. doesn't have to be about what we talked about tonight. It doesn't have to be about reselling. Throw them in the chat. I'll answer as many as I can before I go. Um... My regular job, phone nurse. Yeah, it's so easy. I was a freelance blogger, writer, whatever I was, for four years. And um, 
I actually went back into the field that I was in as a caregiver because I was way too sedentary. I was like, this is just ridiculous. I'm so lazy. And in the field I used to be in, I wasn't because I, you know, I lifted my girls I took care of in and out of their beds and their wheelchairs and we took walks with them and we were just always super active. But then that's how I got hurt, so. I have no regular jogging. I think that's that's what we're uh, saying is the problem, right? Okay, guys, it has reached the hour mark. If after the show you think of something you wanted to ask me, feel free to come back and leave it in the comments. I will. I'm behind right now, but I always answer all of my questions on the YouTube videos. Um, just sometimes it takes me a little while to get to you. If you want to get to me faster, the fastest way to get to me is to join our Facebook group. The, the link is in the description box down below. You can join the group and put a post in there and tag me and you will get my, my attention within a couple of hours usually. Um, and also the group is a really great place to be. We have a lot of really nice people in there. It's a very, very positive atmosphere. Um, I use just my S10 now. <laughs> Until last week it was an S9, but we just upgraded to S10s. So, um, and don't forget, you guys, we have six days until the last day of spring. If you are in the group or you're thinking about joining the Facebook group, there is a special code in there for group members only to get 25% off of our clothing guide, and that will expire on the first day of spring. Hit the like button before you leave, guys. It always helps our channel out so, so much. And if you haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe to our channel and help us feed a hungry hippo. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We are at Flippin' Hippos across all social media. Everybody, thank you so, so much for hanging out with me tonight, spending an hour of your time with me. I love you guys. You guys are the best. Go be productive. Be good to each other. Go make some money. I love you guys. Bye.